What is up YouTube? Today we're going to be going over how to use 3D cameras in DaVinci Resolve. So pumped you guys are here watching my videos. If you're new to this channel, my name is Sam Aldrich, aka Sam the Cameraman. And each and every week I'm coming out with new tutorials, gear reviews, or any kind of tip or trick. Uh, just to help you guys with video editing, photo editing, or anything in your editing process. So, if you haven't already, make sure you guys smash that thumbs up button, subscribe, because we're getting into some really cool things coming up, and I don't want y'all to miss out. So, let's get into this. First thing you can see is I got three different clips here in my timeline. These are going to be my three clips that we are going to be utilizing uh, the 3D cameras on. This bottom clip actually is just a freeze frame from a clip that I took as I'll close these out so you guys can see. Just a freeze frame. It's going to act as our background and you guys will see what I mean very shortly. But once you have your clips in your timeline, the next step is going to be select all of them right click on these guys and let's do new fusion clip and guess what now we're going into fusion all right now that we are into fusion the first few things we're going to do is get organized because organization during this whole process is going to be key especially if you're using multiple clips in this 3d camera stuff you're going to want to stay as organized as possible so we're going to bring up both viewers that's going to be right up here to the right just like that we're going to pull these down. If you want to zoom out on your nodes, all you got to do is hold control and use your scroller wheel out just like that. I'm going to zoom out just a little bit. I'm going to right click. This is something I always do just to stay organized. So if you don't know about it, I recommend doing this because it is nice. Go to arrange tools to grid. So now when you move these around, it's just going to snap right into place, which is super nice. So we can get rid of these stupid merge nodes because we ain't going to need them. Bam. And now let's get rid of this because we don't really need that. And I always recommend you save a bunch just because you never know what's going to happen. My DaVinci Resolve doesn't usually crash, but I have heard some stories of it crashing and you don't want to lose your work. So save often. Anyways, we're going to now label these because we need to know what is what. So if you want to select the first media one, Hit the number one, that is gonna be our background. So if you just hold F2, hit click F2, it's gonna bring up your rename tool. We're gonna to name this background. And we're actually gonna slide this underneath just because it makes sense for the background to be the bottom layer, if you ask me. So then we'll hit the media two. That's gonna be our stage shot or our live performance shot. So we'll hit F2 and we'll just call this one stage. And this one should be the one of sound check sure enough it is f2 sound check all right now that we are organized everything is looking nice we are going to add in image planes every time you want to work into 3d space and you're working with 2d footage or a 2d image you need to add an image plane because that allows it to be in 3d space so to select an image plane you could do shift space bar type in image plane or you could come over here and come over here on the left side or the right side but the left side of the right side if that makes sense hover over it says image plane 3d just drag that right in like so all right now that we got these added in we are going to add in a merge 3d because you need to merge these into 3d space that's going to be this little arrow and circle and from there that's all we really need to do so we can connect all of these and then connect our image planes to our merge 3D. And the nice thing about merge 3Ds is they just continue to add new connecting points as soon as you add more image planes. You could have unlimited amount of image planes on one merge and it'll just continue to add more, which is super cool. I have yet to hit a limit. Um, maybe there is a limit that I just haven't reached yet, but I haven't got there yet. So you can just add a bunch of those. So what you need to do after you connect all those is come up here and grab a render 3d it's going to be the far right on the right bring that in because anytime you're working with 3d space you need to render it back into 2d space and that's what this render 3d does so we connect the merge 3d to render 3d and the render 3d to our media out and just like that we got 3d images but what about the 3d camera you say well you come up here to this little camera guy drag that right in like so 
and that's our camera and we just connect that guess where the merge and now everything's gone you're like oh my gosh where did it all go if we bring our camera right into here there's our camera and I'm going to show you guys a couple tricks here if you hold alt and push the in on your scroller wheel you can literally move this however you want now I always like to look about right there and if you just use your scroller wheel with nothing clicked it goes up and down if you hold control it'll zoom in and out of everything so first thing we want to do is pull the camera back in Z space now you can come over here into the inspector tab and come under the transform properties and you can control everything this way or you can drag these little arrows around the blue is going to be Z space if we just pull that back just like that we have an image right there if you hold control scroll the wheel back to zoom out and we want to keep pulling out quite a bit so right about there now this is where things get interesting so we want to select our background layer because that is what this is right here is our background we want to select it come over to our image plane and come into the transform properties again and we're going to push it backwards in z space or z space if you want to grab the blue little arrow you can push that back or you can control it with the z turner or little spin dial here so if we want to push it back we're going to push it back right about there and as you can see it reveals our video clips but since this is our background we want it to take up all of the screen here so what you want to do with the image plane selected, come down to scale, and you just bring it right up. So there, now it's pushed back in 3D space away from our video clips, and it is scaled to be bigger than all of them. So with that done, we want to come up to our stage shot. Actually, let's select our sound check shot, and we want to do kind of the same thing, but we want to bring the scale down and as you can see it kind of starts pixelating that's because these are on the same plane in z space and they're like blending together but that's okay because we're going to adjust these and move these so that we don't have to deal with that and we're going to move over on our x-axis it's too much like right about there and maybe move up on our y-axis like right there now we want to do the same thing to our stage shots you're going to select the image plane Come over here to the transform properties, scale it way down, and maybe we'll make it a little bit bigger than the one we did before. And we want to come to the right in, on our X, and let's go down. Perfect. Just like that. Now, like I said, save it because who knows what's going to happen. Now that we have this done, as we can kind of see that our background image is too sharp I don't like it I don't like it looking like that so what we want to do is we want to add some blur so I'm gonna pull our image plane over our background node over select our background node hit shift spacebar and let's type in blur I'm gonna add in a directional blur because I know which way I want my camera to already move we're gonna have it move down and then to the right kind of like a little J it's gonna be kind of nice it's gonna be cool but we want this to be at an angle of 180 and we want to bring the length up just a little bit just like that actually maybe a little bit less just like that right there all right now with that all done now we can come in and start animating this camera so that way we can get in on one camera or one clip and then move over to the next and all right so select your camera node come back to your first frame of your sequence and actually what I want to do is we're going to keyframe everything with this you want to keyframe all of your rotation and all of your translation every time you make a move you want to keyframe everything so that way the camera isn't randomly moving to the left or to the right because you forgot to keyframe something alright so now we're going to move forward let's say to 20 actually let's move over to 27 or frame 28 and when all we got to do is you can control your translation with the turn dials here or with the controls here on the camera right here what we're gonna do is push it in on Z space just like that move over like so 
move up. I'm going to zoom in on this a little bit. I'm going to keep moving in. I'm going to use these now. We're going to move down. And all we're trying to do is get this frame center and move in on it. So that way it becomes completely taken up by the frame. Perfect. Now we actually want to take this and zoom it to 50 percent so we can see everything and we're going to keep moving in uh, or moving up on the y just like that i'm happy with that right there but like i said we didn't keyframe anything on our rotation so just go through and hit those keyframes as well so i kind of want this to punch in a little bit on this as we go because you never want the camera to not be moving especially if there is a clip that there is zero movement in that you have recorded like if there was movement in on this clip already at this point it would look okay but um having the added push in is okay too as well so we're going to come up just a few frames and we're just going to move in on z space just like that and now is when our camera transition is going to come in handy but as you can see before we do anything i got to come back and keyframe everything because we're going to start using this rotation to make some really cool movement within this transition. So I want to come forward, maybe do about, what is this, 48, frame 48, maybe even 49 or 50. And with this selected, what I want to do is I'm going to come over to the X rotation and we're going to tilt it down. Now something about 3D cameras is like X moves up and down and Y moves left and right. Why with the rotation? I have no idea. I don't know all that technical stuff. All I know is that is how it works. So we're going to zoom it down a little bit and then we are going to bring our Y axis down to about right here and we're going to keyframe everything. And now what we're going to do is come up only a handful more frames and we are going to revert this. You can just click this little dial here and that's gonna go back to zero and we're gonna to continue to pull this down just like so. Come over a few more frames. We're gonna pull back in Z space. And now we're gonna go over on our X axis so the other clip starts coming in to right there. Now we're going to come up to here, come over a few more frames. We are going to go up on our Y axis and we are going to move in a little bit more and move in and up. Come over a little bit more here. Come over to 100 on this one. And we're gonna go back to where we wanna be on, back to zero on our X rotation. And we're gonna go up on Y. And we're gonna go over on X so it's in. And then we're gonna just zoom in on Z space. And then we're going to finish it off with just a nice, subtle zoom in. Just like that, we will have our finished camera movements. So let's go back to the edit page and let's just see how this looks. All right, so this is how it looks like so far. So it moves, it transitions between them both, but all of those movements are super harsh and we don't like it like that. So let's come back to Fusion and we're gonna make a few adjustments and I'm gonna show you how. All right, now that we're back in Fusion, we wanna select our camera 3D1. And with that selected, we're gonna come up to the spline tab and we're gonna make this obviously bigger because we need to see what's going on. So let's zoom that out. Let's bring this over. And we want to select all of our camera 3D. If they're not selected, you just hit this little checkbox just like that. And all of these keyframes pop up. 
Now we need this to be smooth. The smoother, the better. So what we want to do is just draw a line over all of them. And the easy way to do it is just hit S. And that's going to smooth everything out. Now if you really want, you can come through and adjust each of these handles and fine tune your camera to how the movement that you want it to be. But for me, I found that it, just by hitting S, it actually does a really great job just like that. With that done, let's come back to the edit page and see how it looks. All right, and this is how it looks with everything smoothed out. So if we wanted to, we could go in and refine our spline tab so it sat on this a little bit longer. Or what we could do is just create that digital zoom in to be more frame, like longer period of time, or just have left it and not adjusted anything on it for more frames. But I wanted just to kind of show you guys the movement of the camera and like how you can create like fluid movement within this uh, 3D space. So if you move in, you just kind of come down and it settles right in on that. Now if we come into Fusion, there's a couple things we can do to sell this a little bit better. So let's get rid of our spline tab and let's pull the render 3D over, let's pull the merge over. Let's pull the camera over, these image planes over, image planes. All right, so what we want to do is we are going to come back here. I'm going to zoom in, in a little bit on this and to zoom in and out of this like image here, what all I'm doing is holding control and using my scroller wheel. But we want to add some directional blur to this so you can like it once as the image starts moving it causes some blur so I'm gonna come over I'm gonna come in it comes into like right there and it starts to pan down right here so with our sound check node selected shift spacebar directional blur is already up we're gonna add it so now we want this to be at a 90 degree angle because it's going down we're going to keyframe the length. We're going to go back one frame on here. Go back one frame. We're going to keyframe the length. And we're going to come forward one frame or two frames. And we're going to cause it to go down. Now if we come over, it's going to pan. And if you guys see that there's this harsh cut right here, I'm going to show you what you can do to kind of get rid of this in a moment. But you could also create like a mask around the edges of your image and feather it so that way it's a nice soft blend to the background. That's what I did in the intro. You can do that on here or you can control the opacity and have that disappear as we're going down, which I'll show you in a second, but we're gonna just pull down. And now as we come over and we're coming up into this, just like so, we're gonna actually go and add another directional blur on our stage shots. Select stage, shift spacebar, directional blur selected. We're gonna come at a 45 degree angle coming in and we're going to come back a frame and we are going to keyframe the length, come forward a frame and just drag it forward. And now as we come up, And we're coming in, we'll keyframe the blur boat right there. And as we'll, you just kind of scroll through and as you come in, we'll put it back to zero. And you could add some directional blur here to like add in like some motion blur, but I didn't really want motion blur there. So just like that, we've added directional blur. But now I'm gonna show you guys how to come over here to the sound check thing or the sound check frame and we're gonna Oh, control the opacity. So to control the opacity, select the image plane, come right up here to the material, <clears throat> and as you can see, opacity is right here. So I want it to start to die about right there, or disappear. Maybe die wasn't the right term, but I call it die, but disappear. So we're gonna keyframe it at one. So you see here it's one, it's fully up. Now we're gonna come over right about to here and we want it to be gone. So now as we pull down it goes away and we're gonna do the same with the stage shot as it comes in. 
but it's going to be just the opposite. So as it's coming in, like right about here, we'll come over, select the material side of things in the inspector, and drop it. So that way it's gone. We'll come in about right yonder to about frame 71, bring the opacity all the way up. And just like that, it's going to come up and up here. And now we have our disappearing faded in, faded out shot, so it looks a little bit smoother. Now, like I said, if you wanted to make it even more seamless, there's no hard cuts like this, you could actually go in and create a small little mask around your image and feather it in so that way the, like the borders of it are like faded out almost onto your background layer here, and that way it would look almost more seamless and it would look a lot more seamless with the opacity fade in and out. But that is the basics on 3D camera movements and transitions. You don't have to have a background layer. You could stack these images and do the same thing with the mask around it and feather them so that they blend really well and just transition between image to image to image. It doesn't need to have a background. So let's check out what this looks like as a final product. All right, so as a final product, this is how this is going to look. Let's pull this down so you guys can see a little bit more. And it comes in, fades out. And just like that, we have some 3D, smooth 3D camera movement in 3D space with 2D images. But I'm going to catch you guys in the next one. <sighs>